Welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Today's topic is the blame game. Are you playing the blame game? That's a question that comes up a lot for me when I am looking through different Facebook posts, trying to help as many hairstylists as I can. I see a recurring theme of putting a lot of blame on outside circumstances. And when you really start to do work on yourself, you realize that everything in life is happening for you, not to you, and that you, in fact, are completely in control of your success, especially as a hairstylist behind the chair. There's really no one else in charge of or responsible for our success except for us in the, in the long run, even when we're first starting out or in the middle of our career and towards the end of our career, there's nobody that's going to care as much about your success as you will. So when you lose motivation and you lose steam in trying to stay relevant, stay busy, stay passionate about what you do, it's really all up to you. So I wanted to share a quote. I signed up for a daily quote from someone named Lori Harder, and I love these quotes. I share them often with girlfriends. I just put my finger on them, copy and paste, send them to my friends. They're prob they probably think they're my fabulous quotes. They're not. But this one came at the perfect time with this topic being the blame game. When we blame others for where we are at, it doesn't make us feel better because it transfers all the power to them. It says, because of you, I can't. That couldn't be further from the truth. Never forget that because of them, you will. I love that. Absolutely love that. So I hope that you love it as much as I do. Um, when I hang, when I end this recording, um, I'll share that as well um, on the uh, in the Facebook group. So the reason that I thought about this topic was there was someone in a group that was very frustrated and didn't know how she was going to get busier. She wrote a fairly long post. I'm not going to read it verbatim because most of it wasn't necessary, but. To, to sum it up, she was saying, I'm at a salon that is very large. There are 60 stylists. So 59 other stylists besides her need enough clients to stay busy. So she kind of focused her whole post on the fact that how am I ever going to get busy if there's 59 other people that I have to compete with? And yes, that is a true fact. That is a lot of competition. However, if those 59 people were at other salons spread out within a two mile or three mile radius from her, they're in the same amount of competition with her, even if they're not under the same roof. That's how I look at it as a salon owner and someone who has done my best to get all of my staff busy all the time. So I thought, well, that's not really an excuse. And then she said, there is a level system and most people are stuck in the first level so how am I going to compete if everybody's still in the first level? How am I ever going to get past the first level? How I looked at that, there's a level system. I was like, wow, that's awesome. There is a growth path. That's a positive thing. So everything that she was using as, quote, an excuse, I was looking at as an opportunity. So it's just like anything else in life. It's really how you look at something. Is the glass half full or is it half empty? We can both look at the same exact glass and see something completely different depending on the headspace that we're in at that given time. So I just read through every single response that was given to this girl. Let's call her Jennifer. I don't even remember what her name is. Jennifer, you need to run. Run out of that salon right now. That is not the place for you. You are never going to be successful there. That was one. Jennifer, Start looking, start looking for another place where they're going to really help you get busy and they're going to offer you a steady stream of client. Like everybody kept saying, leave, run. It's the owner of the salon or the salon's job to get Jennifer busy. And I was like, 
just reading and reading and reading. And I'm like, okay, now I'm all in, I'm invested in this outcome because I can't even believe that nobody is giving her a different perspective on this. So I answered, Jennifer, you know, yes, it can be very frustrating when you're trying to build your book. We've all been there. So I'm giving her that satisfaction of like, hey, you're not alone. We've all been there. Because in her post, she didn't share how long has she been in the industry? And more importantly, how long has she been at this salon? She could have been there a month. She could have been there five days. She could have been there five years. It's important. So just like when people offer uh, formulas to people who are asking, you know, showing a picture and saying, what, what, what do I put on my client? And they don't know what the before looks like, what the current canvas looks like. This triggered me just as much on that, you know, facet of like, I need more information. I can't give you even an opinion until I know more about you. So I answered, you know, hey, it's very frustrating. I know we've all been there. Can I ask you a few questions so that I can then give you some feedback? How long have you been a licensed hairstylist? Number one. Number two, how long have you been at this salon? Number three, how many existing clients do you have and... What is your retention rate on those clients? Basically, like, are you sitting with no one all day? Are you half booked, quarter booked, 75% booked? And most important, are those people coming back to you? That's important. Then I said, another important question is, do you stick around during your scheduled hours when you are not booked and busy? That is the number one thing that I've seen in my own new hires People want to flee as soon as the book is open and they want to run around and play with their friends or go get coffee at Starbucks or even worse, go shopping, spending money that they're not making to fill their downtime and fill the void that they're feeling that I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not, you know, seeing enough clients. So it's this whole, you know, 360 cycle of I'm not busy. So I'm going to go shopping. I'm going shopping because I'm not busy. Then I'm not going to have clients because as soon as I left to go to TJ Maxx or Marshalls and do some retail therapy, a person walked in for a full head of highlights and they couldn't get in touch with me in time to put them on my book. So now I lost out on that opportunity. And the opportunity of that walk-in was an opportunity of a five-year relationship of thousands of dollars a year with that walk-in client. So when you're in the habit of leaving and fleeing and running away from yourself, which we've all been there, that's a big problem too. So, you know, when you're on the run, when you're running away from your situation, remember everywhere you go, you are there. Say that again. Everywhere you go, you are there. So if you are part of the problem and you leaving the situation because it feels better for you temporarily, don't forget you're part of the situation that you're trying to run from. And by you running from it, you're not doing anything to fix it. So I'm asking you, if you're playing the name game, the blame game, are you taking action to do something about it? Do something different instead of sitting and doing the background backroom bitching that so many people fall into of, oh my gosh, I'm so slow. This is awful. I have bills. My car payments do. We get into this downward spiral of pity party when all we have to do is look at things differently. So when I asked about the retention, she answered, my retention is 82%. So I'm like, hmm. So if her, her retention is 82%, she should have a full book, in my opinion, because 82% is pretty awesome. So then my question is, 82% of what? Do you have 10 clients and there's 82% coming back? Because 82% of a normal amount of clients, you're pretty booked. You actually have time to eat lunch, but you're booked and you're making a nice living. So I said, are you doing any services that are unique to you that would make you really stand out amongst those 59 other people? And I ask people this a lot. I love the ads that you see in, you know, those penny pincher kind of magazines that come to your house and it's the car wash and the local restaurant and the this and the that. And they say, it's the hair salon. And it's like an outdated stock photo of a lady doing hair. It looks like it's from 1978. And it says, we specialize in, 
And then there's the dot, dot haircut, dot perming, dot coloring, dot waxing. It's like we specialize in 32 things. That, my friends, is not specializing. That is just listing out your menu. That's not special. So we, many, many years ago, I was struggling to get people busy and I would say, okay, guys are pretty easy to get in and out and get you busy when you're new. So let me focus on guys. What I found when I tried to get men to come to my new hires is men are super freaking loyal to their stylists, super loyal, more so than women I found. You know, we would go out to different area businesses and we would hand out T-shirts and hand out certificates to get guys to come in. And they would be like, hmm, that's a really tough one. I really like my person. They get me in all the time. They run on time. They, they get me in and out. They, they would give me all the reasons that they love their person. So that was interesting. So if you're looking for loyalty and having your book filled every two weeks with like a really loyal group of guys, that's one business model. Curly hair is super popular right now and in demand and curly hair people want someone who really knows curly hair cutting because as someone who struggled to cut curly hair and stopped cutting hair because of a curly haired client, that's a whole other story, uh, specializing in that can be super lucrative. My best friend changed her entire business by going and training and going all in on curly hair. Stacy, one of the members in my Hair Color Secrets Insider group, is specializing in curly hair, and she's starting a whole education program on specializing in curly hair. So curly hair is a specialty. Uh, lived in color, you've seen all over the place, is very much a specialty, but not so special anymore because everyone's doing it. But a long, long time ago, I saw in a magazine that someone was doing this process that was flat ironing in a shine product into the hair to put a coat of clear shine on top of color. And I was like, oh boy, I need to know what this is. So I made an appointment. I got in my car. I drove to New York City, two hours away. The, the whole day probably cost me $800. But I went to that salon. I talked to that stylist. I said, what is this that you're doing? Like, this is crazy. I love this idea. They told me what they were doing. We started doing it and we created a new name for it. We named it Thermashine because it was a thermal heat product. We were putting shine into the hair. We were booked solid for months with that treatment. And all of our color clients wanted it on top of their color because they felt like it was sealing it in. I mean, who doesn't want sealed in color and shiny hair? But we totally created it. And then we started doing a, um, a service where people who had annoying calyx or just super, super curly hair, maybe at the roots of their hair and then straight on the ends. We did custom smoothing that, you know, is in areas and we called it a curl tamer. So we created this curl tamer service. One of our girls specialized in it, got book solid with curl tamer services. So one person was doing thermoshines, that was their specialty. One person was doing curly cuts. One person was doing curling you know, curl taming people that didn't want their curl. So we just kept reinventing these services so that when we did our marketing, we stood out from everyone else that was just doing cuts, color, waxing, up to his kids cuts, all the things. So I don't want to hear that there's 59 other people and that's why you're not busy. What are you doing? What are you seeking out? What education are you getting so that you are the first person that when that person calls and they hear that there's 59 people to choose from, they say, well, I have kinky curly hair and it's driving me crazy, especially in my sideburn area. I just want to smooth just that. Is there anyone that specializes in that? So stand out from the crowd. So then marketing wise, I said, when you look at your book two days ahead of time, do you take action? And she's like, what do you mean? You know, everybody always gets an attitude when I ask them questions. They just want the answers, right? They don't want to hear a question and answer to find out more. So I said, one of the most impactful things that we've done as a salon is if we see that we have a really slow week coming up, we look ahead by two days and we look at the book and say, I have Mary in at 12 o'clock and I don't have anybody till four o'clock. I'm going to pick up the phone and call Mary and say, Hi, Mary, I see that you're coming in on Wednesday at 12 o'clock um, to get your color done. 
Do you have maybe a friend, a coworkers, a neighbor, someone that would like to come with you and also have color done? I would love for you to bring them with you and we will offer you and your friend both 50% off of your service. And immediately when you offer that suggestion to someone, they say, oh, so-and-so on Instagram said, don't ever discount. Discounts make your brand weak and it looks like you're needy and, and desperate. I disagree. Calling Mary personally, I'm, ta- I'm not talking about putting out a coupon or making it sound cheap. I'm talking about a, a personal phone call. Mary, I'm so excited to see you on Wednesday. I have time after you. Somebody canceled last minute and I'd love to fill that spot. And I'd really love to meet one of your family or friends that maybe hasn't been able to get in with me or is just looking for something different and want to treat themselves to a new stylist experience. I'd love to take care of both of you and it'll be fun. We have wine at the salon, you know, we'll be able to catch up and I'll be able to get to know your friend. You make it a personal thing. And she said, the girl answered, I always look ahead in my book and I always do something. And I'm like, no, you don't. There's no way that you're calling two days ahead and offering 50% off of a service. There's no way I'm I'm calling BS on that. But the point is, and people will say, oh, I don't want to lose that money. You're not losing that money. You're losing everything by not calling Mary. If Mary's on the book and she's going to be a hundred dollars, if you're an employee at that salon, best case scenario, you're getting 50 bucks for Mary, right? If Mary brings Julie and you give her 50% off, you're still getting 50 bucks for your time with Mary and your time with Julie. And that's time that you would just be sitting there or even worse, running to TJ Maxx and Marshall's to spend the $50 that you don't have. So don't be short-sighted. Don't buy into all the hype that don't discount, don't do this, don't do that. You have to do what you have to do in those early stages. Oh, and she did answer. I said, how long have you been at this salon? She said, a year and a half. And I said, that's totally normal. At a year and a half, I would say 90% of stylists are not fully booked. It takes a good three years to hit that stride of being fully booked where you can count on those clients you've already seen being on that cycle that you can consider yourself fully booked. So that's being, you know, looking at the the full picture and not being short-sighted and doing what's necessary to get yourself busy. Every single person and I'm talking 40 to 50 responses on that post. Girl, you need to get out of there. Girl, they don't appreciate you. Girl, you need to leave. Girl, you're never going to make it there. And I was like, wow, salon hopping will absolutely keep you not booked and frustrated and, you know, spinning on a wheel of a hamster wheel of lack. I don't have clients. I'm not busy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have to find another job. You get to the next job oh my gosh, I'm not busy. I don't have enough clients. I have to leave. I have to go to the next job. Jumping to different salons is never the answer. Yes, if you're being, if, if you're in a horrible culture that you're not being respected, you're being ignored, you're being treated poorly, absolutely leave. She didn't say any of those things in her post. She just said, I'm not busy enough. And everybody's reaction was to flee. We all know it's fight, flight, or freeze when we are uncomfortable. So she can either freeze, which she's doing right now, sitting in her dirty diaper and complaining that she's not busy. She can fight by saying like, it's the boss's you know, responsibility. It's not my responsibility. All these people are stuck in level one. She can fight it or she can flee run to another salon, run to the store to shop and avoid, you know, run, run, run. Or none of those three responses is a good response. She can actually take action, make a change within staying at that salon to live a better life and be more successful, but it's up to her. And all 50 of those people that gave her feedback just, you know, let her think that she really is the victim, that it's happening to her and that woe is me, I'm not busy. Back in the early 80s, it was like the busy bus came driving up and dropped off the clients. We were busy. I didn't even know what the heck I was doing in the early 80s. I was just out of beauty school and I was always booked because for some reason there was just always a lot of clients and people weren't educated. They didn't have social media. They didn't see 
what they were missing in other salons that they may have ventured off and gone to. So they went to the salon closest to them and literally just showed up and said, hi, I need a haircut. They, they weren't the educated customer that we have now. So there's a lot higher level competition. I think COVID was good for our industry because it weeded out all the tire kickers, all the ones that weren't really serious about being in the industry. They all fled. They all fled. But there's a lot of people who froze and they're frozen in that I can't get back to where I was. It's never going to be the same retails in Amazon and drugstores and what was me, I can't sell retail and I can't survive. And what can I do? I have to get, and, and I can't tell you how many people's first knee jerk reaction is I have to get another job, an extra source of income. When you do that, you totally completely water down the possibility of your success. Yes. Sometimes we have to do it in maybe the first year behind the chair because it's just not possible to live on that money. I bartended the first year and I was exhausted. I had to bartend every Wednesday night and every Saturday night and all the other days I was doing hair. But what was great about bartending, I was smart. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I didn't go work at, you know, babysitting or something, you know what I mean? Where I was just going to be playing with a kid and not seeing other people. I wanted to make sure that that second uh, source of income was I was going to meet people. So every time I bartended, people complimented my hair or they said, you know, do you work here full time? What else do you do? And I was like, no, I'm a hairdresser. Oh my gosh, cut, cut my hair. Here's my card. Here's my card. Here's my card. So, you know, it wasn't taking away from my future success as a hairstylist. It was putting me in front of more people. And then once I started to get busy, I did away with the bartending job. When I had slow time, I would leave the salon and I would go to the closest upscale department store and I would get friendly with the women at the makeup counter. And I would say, you know, you're the first person that people look to for beauty and your hair has to look amazing. I would love to do your color free. I want to make you my, you know, personal ambassador of my color. I will always do your color for free. In exchange, I want you to have a stack of my business cards. And when women come and get those little touch up makeovers, can you please share my card with them and say, hey, if you're ever looking for a new stylist, she's right here. She's two minutes from here, whatever. It worked great. But I did that. The owner of my salon didn't have the cards printed for me. I see that all the time. People say, oh, I don't have a business card. Well, guess what? It's 2023. You don't need a business card. All you need is your phone. You can create one of those QR codes on your phone that when you meet someone, you hold up the QR code, they you know, tap it with their camera, and all your information is now in their phone. They don't need a business card. That is very 1980s. So stop worrying about branding and logos. And I hear all of that. That is important to a certain extent, but the logo and the branding and all the things that's getting that client in the chair, if you don't have the right education and the right skill set, you're going to be like a boat with a tiny hole in it that's filling up with water. And then the water is running out the bottom, running out the bottom, running out the bottom. So, you know, you have to be on your game with education, skill set, and promotion and do whatever you, you being the operative word, possibly can to make your life different and stop blaming other people. Stop playing the victim, you know, just settle into who you are as a stylist, who you want to be as a stylist. And to end this, if I had 59 other people that were successful around me, I would not be in the back room bitching. I would be watching all 59 of them to see what are they doing differently that they are busier than me. And I would just soak up all the information that I could rather than look at the help wanted ads and trying to run to another job that's going to be the same. Even if it's a salon that has five people, they're going to be busier than you because they were there before you and they put their time in. It's all about putting that time in. So stop running from yourself and run to your success. And if you're ever looking for a mentor, I am here to help you and guide you all the way. I hope all of you are signed up for my November workshop. It starts November 9th. Um, I, I have over 50 people already signed up in the pre-sale 
we're doing something different this time and we're, we're raising the price as it gets closer. So we started out at $67. A lot of you took advantage of that pre-sale. Now we're at $97. The final price is going to be $197. So do not put off for tomorrow what you can do today and wait and pay three times more than you had to pay just by being in that space of, oh, it's not till November. I have time to get my ticket. Maybe I'll do it. I'm not available. I keep getting messages. I'm not available those dates. I'm like, lucky for you. I always record it and you can watch it whenever you want. So now what's your next excuse? So stop making excuses. Um, another quote, let me see if I can find it. Um, this was like perfect timing as well. And I put it on my Instagram. A lot of you don't follow me on Instagram. So if you don't, I would love for you to jump over there. It is Expert Color Solutions on Instagram. Uh, where is that quote? Everyone looks at the cost of working with a coach. Nobody considers the cost of being in the same place one year from now. So I'm going to leave you with that. Where do you want to be one year from now? If you want to be exactly where you are, then stay where you are. But there's a whole other world of information and excitement and income that you don't even know is possible because you're staying right where you are. So thanks for listening and I will see you on the next one.